12.87, I assume. Mm -hmm. 12.87. Yes. All right. So, you know, we've got that together. And the next step, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and while I've got this in 12 volt, I'm going to bring out an inverter to hook up to this and show you, you know, how, how that would work. So bear with me. I'm going to grab that out of the box and come over and we're going to put that in and draw some loads off of this thing and watch it go. So bear with me a minute while we grab some stuff. We sell, I've got all black wire out today. This is just cables that we had made. You know, we obviously, this was a system. I've got a piece of red tape on the end of this. I would, you know, I, I would color code my cables and if we were designing a system, um, just something that we had laying around and to expedite getting out here, putting this video in, you know, it's something that I wanted to just throw together real quick. So that's what we're doing, but we do offer red Cobra flex cables and everything's made to order. So give us a call and I will be back in a moment with an inverter. All right, so what we got here on the table is an Ames PureSign power inverter, 2,000 watts, and you see the continuous draw. Remember what you're pulling out of your batteries, you're multiplying by, you know, the amps by, you know, if you're running 2,000 watts, you're going to have 2,000 divided by 12, so you're going to have a lot of current that you're pulling out of there. So we want to size the wires correctly. Um, something that, let's grab the calculator real quick, 2,000 divided by 12 is going to be 12.7, let's do 10.8, because that's what we'll draw down to, 2,000 by 12.8, it's going to be 160, I think, 156.25. Okay, so if full draw on this thing continuously, we'd have 156 amps going through this. So, you know, again, your four gauge wire, absolutely not. Um, so that's where this fella comes in on your positive side. Uh, today, I'm not going to stick this in here, but you know, for you, you want to when you're sizing your inverter, you want to put an ANL fuse block or an appropriate fuse block in the positive side. So maybe, you know, then you want these to be the same thing. So if four feet, maybe you do, uh, if you don't have a long run, maybe you get a three foot and a one foot, put this guy in there and uh, maybe a 250, 250 amp fuse. You want a nice heavy a &L block. We saw a lot of the blue C uh, fuse box, but I'm not throwing one in today because this is just going to be for demonstration for a short period of time. Um, we're going to pull a few loads off this inverter, and but if you do these installs, you definitely need to get a good quality fuse block put in. And we're going to turn the camera off in just a minute, but I'm going to talk about this Ames inverter that I started to talk about a few minutes ago. And you know what? Things change, the times change. There was a point in time where I probably would not be promoting an Ames inverter. However, when I look at the market now, you know, this, this particular inverter on Amazon has got very 4.6 rating, 60, 60 some reviews. It, it's, it's got really good reviews. And some of the go-to inverters that I have used in this capacity in the past, you know, I, I love some Snyder, I love some, some of the Xantrax products, but their ProWide is not one of them. I mean, every time I try to pull a load with that thing over 18 watts, it craps out. More recently, you know, the Samlex stuff, we have trouble with the fan staying on. So, you know, this inverter we've tested out, it seems to be running good, and it's some, that's gonna be one that we put in a package. You know, this is, when we're figuring out the systems and what we're doing, I mean, this, this inverter, you know, it's got your GFI plug. So if you want to hardwire the system, this is not the product for you. But, you know, again, when you're developing a system, one of the things you want to figure out, do we want to hardwire or is this mobile running extension cords good enough? 
So, you know, it depends on what you're doing. And when you get into the hardwire pure sine wave inverters, this is a pure sine wave inverter. Really good price point on this for what it does. And, uh, you know, again, we want to reinforce that uh, you, you, you want to figure out whether if, if you want to hardwire the wall sockets in your house before you start going, don't get something like this and then try to, you know, make some kind of suicide cord. You know, bad, bad judgment to get started. Figure out whether you want something hardwired or mobile. You know, this is what we call a mobile inverter. If two plugs here are good enough, then awesome. You know, that would be the capacity I'd recommend this product in. So I'm going to take a few minutes and hook it up and we're going to pull some loads on it and kind of emulate what we do with the 12 volt system. So let's stop for a moment. I'm going to hook up the cables and we'll be back to you in a moment. Okay. All right. So I've went ahead and I've hooked up some inverter cables. I have chose to go off of one of the two metal batteries. So we're not pulling current all the way. You know, it's just something that we do. I, I, I think it's something you're going to want to do. And, you know, like I said, don't forget, if you're doing this, this guy needs to go in line on the positive side. Don't forget, you know, we're playing with electronics indoors, so don't forget this. And it's always good to have one of these around, although we haven't had a need for it today. That's a good thing. So we get over here, and uh, first I want to check, make sure that we've got... Uh, the right voltage coming in on our inverter so you now we're still at 12.7778 on here and uh, that's good so get this out of the way and uh Okay, so our inverter, there's a on button right here. This inverter actually has a display or a meter that you can purchase to go with it. Um, it's on, that's kind of neat. Again, you know, just the emergency aspect of having this thing. This inverter comes with a USB port, so let's try that out. Inverters on, you know, cell phone, charging port. All right, so you see we're charging here on the cell phone. Um, you know, we wouldn't expect anything less, but, you know, it comes with a USB port. This piece here is really important. I would recommend everybody buy one of these. We'll put a link. I'm not selling these, but it's a kilowatt meter. You can, before you start sizing a system, if you have existing loads, you know, you can monitor the kilowatt hour usage for a 24 hour period before you start buying things. So say you have a CPAP machine, refrigerator, whatever, you plug this guy in here and it will tell you uh, what, what you're pulling. So that's how many volts we're at. I'm old and I can't see, but there you go through the different values. So I want to see how many watts this thing will pull so I'm gonna get this adjusted in and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use the heat gun that always pulls a big load so let's see how this inverter fares against that give me just a moment and uh, we'll be back with you again so we got the volts the amps are not pulling anything right now the watts the Hertz you know, that's good that we're showing right at 60 on this inverter. That's perfect. Okay, so I'm going to plug in this heating uh, heat gun, which I know pulls a really heavy load in here, and we're going to test this guy out. 
and see how many watts we pull off this system. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start it with no heat and then turn it on up. So we're at 82 watts. And then we pop this thing on up. And we see this thing's pulling 1,315 watts off this system. And uh, let it run for a minute. And the fan on this thing hasn't even come on yet, so that's really cool. So, I mean, that's really cool. You know, I, like I said, I've, I've tested some inverters out that, you know, that actual test right there, the whole, the whole case of them error coded out from another manufacturer. You know, I haven't fully pulled 2,000 watts on this thing for continuous thing, but I mean, so far, so good. Um, impressive so far. The fan didn't even come on on this inverter with that. We'll do some more testing on that in a bit. Now this thing, you know, I know it pulled a ton of current out of this battery at 12, 12 volts on 12 volt system. Uh, see what we're down to here. So that pulled that down to 12 point seven out of the loads off so it'll come on back up and recover a little bit but that's just a little bit to demonstrate you know a simple 12 volt system how it's wired together we've got all the uh, negatives together we've got all the positives together we got a positive thing to the inverter don't forget the nl fuse block we got the negative wire to the negative inverter here you go don't forget don't forget your personal protective in equipment. And when you uh, play with this stuff inside, keep the fire extinguisher in case you mess up. It happens to the best of us. And uh, I'm going to hook up a few more products to this thing and test some things out and get my wires untangled. And we'll be back with you in a few minutes.